to start on that. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me today. Um, I'm going to talk today about uh, burger theory in the context of street food, but an uh, important caveat to start with is that street food is consumed by some uh, 2.5 billion people worldwide on a daily basis. Uh, that's according to the FAO of the UN. Obviously, the street food that they consume, uh, they as in the global south that are the vast majority of street food consumers, is vastly different than the $8 and $10 burgers that we sell. Um, so just keep that in mind that I have a six minute talk. I'm used to rambling at uni about stuff for an hour or so. So if you had me there, then maybe I'd be able to talk a little bit more about those issues, but I can't. So it's going to be a little bit more focused. Um, so this photo I have up, uh, this is uh, taken in Manhattan, which is now Tribeca uh, area. Uh, it's taken in 1936, very different time, uh, as you know what the events uh, going on around 1936. Uh, and the reason I chose it is because for me it symbolizes what my sort of archetype of what I love street food to be. Uh, intimately intertwined with modernity, there's no doubt about it that street food fueled uh, the growth of cities like New York. Uh, New York actually in uh, 1691 first had uh, street food and uh, it was actually New Amsterdam then. So you can see that it's been intimately intertwined. Uh, and owner operated the sort of thing. Of course, this one is hot dogs, but if you've been to New York, if you've seen the food carts, such a diversity of food, um, so many different people cooking great stuff. This is a little bit more accurate. This is my childhood experience with uh, street food. This is in Toronto. Um, this is what you have to get if you're going to a Toronto Blue Jay baseball game. Uh, the street hot dogs, I'm not really proud of it necessarily. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit less glamorous perhaps, but that's probably closer to my experience. However, I'd be remiss if I didn't suggest that food trucks have been also uh, part, uh, you know, not necessarily responsible but definitely part of not as nice things. This is um, the Chicago Stockyards. Uh, if anybody here has read uh, Upton Sinclair's The Jungle, uh, you'd know that uh, food trucks weren't, or the original food carts, uh, played a role in uh, supplying employers and employees with food that enabled them to work very hard and in Upton Sinclair's opinion, a little bit too hard. So there are some things that, uh, the ugly parts of modernity, perhaps, also are intertwined with food trucks. So we'll skip ahead. Uh, that was just brief background. I only have six minutes again. Just go on. Uh, that's the truck. That's Pearl. Um, we named it Pearl because I turned to my business partner, Rob, and said, what's the name when we were driving it back? And he said Pearl. So <laughs> nothing to that, really. Um, but yeah. Uh, and what I would say is that, uh, okay, perhaps cutting edge, I don't know, but what you should know is that there's already been reality TV about food trucks, so arguably we've already jumped the shark. Um, <laughs> this was uh, the great food truck race with not my favorite Tyler Florence, but anyway, that's another story. And uh, it was Nom Nom versus Grill Mall in the end. I won't ruin the exciting finale. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it was, this is a concept that's been around a little while. And what we're talking about here is arguably, I hate foodie and gourmet, all those words. But it, it's a higher end uh, product than you would be experiencing with the kind of street meat. Um, and basically, that's what we try to do is, here's a picture, make you hungry maybe. Um, this is the burger that we do. It doesn't look exactly like that. It's not as different as McDonald's versus you know what you see there. <laughs> Amazing stuff on food photography, and this was done by White Wall Photography, uh, some wonderful local photographers. But what I would say is, this is, brings me to why I think street food is a great thing for uh, the world over, uh, but potentially uh, Australia in particular, is um, it's hard to see maybe in this photo, but uh, the grind that we do, when we grind our own meat, we get it um, from the Kurong region, from Peace Fine Foods. Uh, these are the Angus uh, cows that are on Lake Albert in the Kurong. And it's literally the meat that you would potentially be having in some of the fanciest restaurants, certainly in Adelaide, but potentially across Australia. And we're able to offer it uh, for a significantly cheaper price because we were able to focus on one thing, not have to have a huge kitchen, 
Uh, there's a lot of annoying stuff with the truck, but probably not as annoying as running some of these you know, massive restaurants. Um, what's particularly striking for me about this photo and why I think Australia is particularly suited to food trucks is the first being that this paddock to plate movement, it's a little bit difficult uh, for the vast majority of people to get into it if your entry level point is you know, $25, $30 dinner that you have to sit down and you know, engage with for a long time. When people walk you know, and see us uh, on the street, they're able to engage in a much more accessible manner at a much more accessible price, and hopefully that's able to bring these very quality protein and other produce that uh, is all across Australia to a greater variety of consumers. The other thing I'd say about this photo is it's a beautiful day, Lake Albert, it seems, and it's a little bit hot for me, but it's a beautiful day today. It's probably going to rain a little later, but um, I feel really bad for my um, you know, Toronto compatriots that are uh, doing food trucks at the moment because it's about to be about three or four months of snow, and I don't know how they're going to go with that. But it's really an amazing opportunity for Australia because you have such wonderful weather. Don't forget it. Um, so, but this doesn't really explain, perhaps, um, and I'm not maybe getting across, um, perhaps, why food trucks are so great to my mind. Something I think that is intertwined with the experience that's a little bit difficult to put to words. But I've chosen to end with um, a Pulitzer Prize winner who is probably a little bit better at crafting it than I am. Um, that's Jonathan Gold. And he says, this is talking about Koji, which is arguably the first truck that launched food trucks into, you know, with social media and this sort of thing. He says, the short rib tacos and kimchi quesadillas are tasty at Koji. The truck's maestro, Roy Choi, was the only Angelino to be honored as the best new chef this year by Food & Wine magazine. But that doesn't quite explain why fans obsessively monitor its Twitter feed, gossip about its secret menu items, and stand in line for 45 minutes, just by the way, sometimes there is a wait. Um, <laughs> the cook to order, uh, you know, you got to do it. So when they could fill up at a jack-in-the-box drive through in one-tenth of the time. The draw could be the communal experience, or it could be the feeling that you belong to a fraternity of the plugged in. It could be that moment that defines street food of all types. Your food is cooked, served, and consumed in what seems like a single fluid motion, desire and fulfillment becoming one. So with that, I better get to the truck and start cooking. So uh, thank you, everybody, and uh, see you from the truck. Cheers.